Do you want to know how to take your script and put it on the screen? Then we're here to show you how. Welcome to Film Live, the show that takes you behind the scenes of the filmmaking journey. I'm your host, Leanne Collinson, and today we're going to speak into Stuart Gold, who is a writer, and he's going to be taking us on the filmmaking journey from script to screen. Stuart, thanks for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about your background, please? Sure. Well, I'm a lawyer by trade. I went to the University of Michigan. I went to the University of Florida Law School. Um, I didn't intend to set out as a writer, uh, but I just found that I had a knack for it. Uh, people, it sounds silly, but people, every time I wrote an email or wrote a, I actually wrote Amazon reviews for a while that people quite liked. I think I have uh, one of the most liked Amazon reviews uh, <laughs> in Amazon history. <laughs> There's actually been fights that have gone on in the comment section of my Amazon reviews. <laughs> <laughs> They're so controversial. <laughs> so I, I found that my knack uh, and my talent was really making people laugh and uh, in, in the written form. So I wanted to go down that, that path. How did you find that you were a storyteller? So from a lawyer background, that's not really a storytelling background, but yet you've embarked on this journey and um, quite a successful one as well, like you've had um, scripts optioned. So how, how have you, how, how did you decide to actually go from telling, like from being a lawyer to scriptwriter? What was that decision making process like? Sure. Um, I, I mean, I think I always kind of felt it in my blood a little bit. Uh, I took a playwriting class in college. I mean, I come from a family of professionals. My dad's a doctor. Um, you know, I have, my sister's a lawyer. I have cousins who are lawyers, doctors. So I think I was kind of always pushed a little way, and not not you know, by my own doing, also pushing that career path. But I always felt somewhere deep down that writing was kind of my skill set. Um, so when I got to when I got thinking about it, I said, "All right, you know, let's let's." At some point, I, I had to say, "What am I really want to do with my life? Do I want to?" Be a lawyer my whole life, or I actually want to do what I'm passionate about, which is writing, and give that a try. So I went down that, that I went down that path. My first kind of really big break was I wrote a, a spec script um, for the show. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Um, it's a comedy show on FX. It's been on for around ten years. I just read. I probably read six or seven books on how to do screenwriting, and wrote my spec script. I put it online on this little junky website I created, and within around two months. Uh, People started reading it and inquiring about, you know, about the script, about who I am, what I write, um, which led me to a director out in L.A., and we decided to start making projects together from that. So that's kind of my entry into the writing world. When it comes to reading books, I think one of the most important things is to kind of study the craft of storytelling. It's really, um, I think it's really important. There's a lot of inspirational books out there, uh, like memoirs, like writing memoirs that are kind of more inspirational. They talk about writing in a log cabin somewhere in the forest, which sounds nice and it's, you know, it's romantic, but it's not the nuts and bolts of storytelling. I mean, I think when you're talking about screenwriting, you want to read books uh, like Robert McKee's story, which is, I think, one of the seminal books on storytelling and writing. Um, one I've read recently uh, that I really liked is called uh, by Jill Chamberlain called The Nutshell Technique. Okay. Um, Into the Woods uh, is another screenwriting, uh, you know, more, they're more craft manuals, how to, on how to tell stories, which I think, you know, the first thing before you even pick up a pen or pick, go to your keyboard is to learn how to tell a story. Are you using any particular tools to write your scripts? Because I know a lot of people use Final Draft, but are there any others out there that people can draw upon to be able to write their scripts and make the process a bit easier? Sure. Um, I mean, I... I write with a writing partner, um, so I like to use a, a program that's online uh, called Writer's Duet. Um, it's There's a free version that works just perfectly and allows me to write with a writing partner. I mean, I'm here in the UK, my writing partner is out in uh, Los Angeles, and we could see in real, we could write together in real time. Um, it has storyboarding element, and they have a paid version that has a lot more uh, you know, options, which is probably a, a really good idea if you're considering using it professionally. Um, but there's cell text, there's, there's a lot of different um, writing softwares that you could look up but writer i mean final draft is the industry standard um like i said if you're writing with somebody else i, I would highly recommend writers do it as to take a look at that for anyone that has has got that nine till five role i'm wondering how you can make a living <laughs> from basically just saying yeah i'm a lawyer to now i'm a writer but from going 
from quite um, a high profession to something that would essentially not deliver um, any stability. I'm wondering like what the mental process was for that. Sure. So <clears throat> I, I think for me, it was, I always wanted to be, for me, I always wanted to be comfortable financially first, which I knew. I mean, I have a family, I have a wife, I have a child. And I think it's important. Uh, you really, if you don't have, I would, if you don't have any money, then you're going to really feel a lot of pressure to perform and perform quickly, which won't always lead to good art, I don't think. Um, that being said, you know, it's a tough decision when you're coming out of school. I think if I was, if I was went straight into writing after leaving school without the responsibilities I have now, it would have been maybe a little bit easier in some ways. But seeing that I had responsibility, I said, okay, what would be the best way for me to do this? And that really meant a lot of hard work. That meant coming home from work at eight o'clock at night, putting my son to sleep, and then writing from 11 p.m. to three in the morning, maybe four or five nights a week. So really, I mean, there's no easy way to do it. It's just kind of, if you are passionate about it, you're mm -hmm. dedicated to it, and you have a feeling inside your gut that this is what you want to be doing, you just kind of have to make it happen. And that was my decision-making process that I, it would be much easier to get home, go to bed at 10 o'clock and say, you know what, this is a dream for another time and always defer my dream till later and later to eventually it never happens. But at some point you have to make a decision is that if this is something I really want to go afterwards, then yes, I'm going to have to put in maybe 18 hour days to get it done. Yeah, that's, that's the hard part, isn't it? And I, I don't think people realize that it is really difficult. You've got to put the time, the effort, the hustle. It's, it is, um, it's a journey. It's a journey. It is a journey. I mean, you see, you know, when I tell people I'm writing, they say, well, you, you could be the next uh, uh, J.K. Rowling. And I said, you know, that her story is not an overnight story. It's a story of years of suffering, of working out of a car, of having, you know, having a, being a single mother. I mean, it's years and years and years. You only see the finished product. You know, when I get, when I had some of my work optioned, um, you know, everyone says, oh, that's great. You know, it must've been easy. Must They think maybe I spent a few hours a day, but really it was years leading up to that point, not, not days or not even months. I think a lot as a young or not young, but maybe aspiring writer, a lot of it's just hustle. It's creating your own opportunity. It's, you know, no one's going to come to you. You're in the studio, no studio or agent or anyone's going to magically knock on your door and say, what do you have? Um, you're going to have to hustle your butt off and get out there and say, this is what I have. And, you know, it might take a year. It might take two years. It might take five years. If you're willing to put the time into it and you have, and you have the talent, the talent has to be a given, then hopefully you get to that point. I had a reality uh, show that we produced. I produced my writing partner um, in LA where we put together a 10 minute sizzle reel. We entered that into a festival um, and it got chosen out of probably a few hundred other uh, uh, reality series to, for an option, directly for an option with uh, a network in the United States. Um, during that time period, it was a, a year option. We signed the, you know, we signed the deal. They ended up not, ended up not picking it up, unfortunately, but that was one instance. I've taken photos with uh, over 2,000 different people. I have over 2,000 photos right now with celebrities and uh, magicians and comedians. My mission in life is to get a photo with every celebrity. I love the celebrities. I don't stop. I am a fan addict. I am Pinky Lovejoy Coogan. My hobby is getting pictures with celebrities. My first um, another instance is that we actually met um, somebody a head of a production company through another piece of work we are working on and they said um, you know if you write a if you write a script for us we'll option it and then we'll decide if we want to go forward with that mm -hmm. unfortunately again that was not uh, made into a final product but that was how we got to that point I mean and you know the, the honest to God truth about this industry is you gotta you gotta be prepared to be rejected I've been rejected for every one thing that gets positive feedback or, or gets through, I have a hundred that 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 are rejected, and it could be very disheartening. Um, you really have to be tough and have really belief in yourself that what you're doing is good. Yeah. And sometimes it's not good. And if you get rejected ten times or twenty times in the same thing, then maybe you have to say put it aside and say, you know, this is not as good as I thought. And most times you'll look back at that a year from now and you'll say, oh yeah, it wasn't as good as I thought. Um, there'll be a reason that, you know, it continuously gets rejected. You got to be smart enough to know that, that when something isn't good, that you just kind of kind of leave it behind and move forward. But if you really believe in your project, be prepared to get rejected and get rejected a lot until you get that final yes. How long is an option contract and what money are we talking about? Like what financial benefit? What's the range? Sure. Um, I mean, the option periods are typically 
fairly short. Um, they could be from six months to maybe 18 months, I would say, are typical. Um, and then there's typically renewal on the option. So it may be a year long option with another six months to renew, six months renewal on it to see if they need a longer look. I mean, most times I think if, if it's not, if, there, if it's a no go, then after the year expires, that'll be it. It'll go back. But if they're seriously looking on, at it, they'll probably renew it. And then during that period, make the final decision whether or not they want to move forward to it. Um, the monetary aspect, I mean, to be honest, it's not great. Um, you know, it, it typically, you know, you can see stuff from around a thousand dollars to maybe $5,000 if you're lucky. Um, you know, if, if you're an established writer, I think, and you're, and you're, have, have written many films, commercially successful films, then yeah, then I think you can get up into the five, six figures, but you've already established yourself as a writer. As a writer starting out, I mean, a thousand dollars sounds great don't get me wrong but for the amount of work you put into that a thousand dollars you realize you know there's a lot of other things you can be doing to make a whole lot more money than that um but it's important it's important to put on your resume it's an important credit and it's important just to say for self-validation purposes that i've done something good enough that stood out from the crowd that it's actually gotten a serious look from a professional company that was going to be my next question is how do you meet these people how do you get through the door sure um, it's putting, I mean, a lot of it's having the work and, and putting yourself in position to get noticed. I mean, you, ha you can't have one without the other. If you don't have any work and you meet and you meet the head of every studio in the world, they're going to say, well, what have you done? You're going to say, well, nothing. I have, and how are you ever going to get a job off that? At the same time, you may have written the next uh, Godfather. And if you're not out there showing it to anybody and, and beating down doors, I mean, again, people aren't just going to come to you. You need to go to networking events. You got to enter your, I mean, even as simple as entering your script into uh, festivals uh, or competitions. I've entered a lot of my scripts into competitions and placed in the top five or top 10. And not like that alone will do anything. But then when I go to a meeting um, or I'm at a networking event and I'm meeting producers, I could say, hey, one of my scripts was made into a top five of a competition. Would you like to take a look at it? I look at any career, whether you're in law, you're in medicine, engineering, um, it's a step-by-step -step process. It's, you know, you build, you build slowly one step after another step. And you got to look at your career, I think, as a writer, as you're never going to write The Godfather at first. You're going to start writing short, short stories, short films, and then hopefully at one point build up towards that. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us and taking us on your journey from script to screen. If you liked this video and you found it helpful, Please give us a like and a subscribe and we'll see you soon.